Well, if you're going to laugh, maybe. I'm not laughing. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Machine. Scooby-Doo. See, this is why I said I'm enjoying, because there's another talent that Harlan has. There's another one that we, people, there's another talent he has we had no idea. And yet there it is, Harlan Williams scatting. And you heard it here first. (laughs) You're riding down the Harlan Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harlan Highway show. Harlan Williams. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now that's right. You're on the Harland Highway podcast with my very special guest and friend, Alonzo Bowden, right? Yes, sir. How are you, guy? I am great, man. This is, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. Don't forget your microphone. Yeah. Early on. <laughs> there we, we go. We just started. Yeah. And it's already everything I expected. It the is? The experience. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is beautiful. So thank you. It's been fun. I'm going to head back down now. Oh, are we done? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let me put the theme music back up. And this has been Alonzo (laughs) Bowden. And (laughs) imagine that. It's all Um, we need. Just that's it. We got that. We got that. (laughs) Dude, so good to see you. Thanks for being here. Absolutely, man. Happy to be here. And uh, yeah, I mean, things are the new normal, is what I call it. The new normal. Yeah. You're a guy too that I, I noticed that you really like like in your life, in your comedy, you really kind of map what's going on socially in the world. You know you know when that happened? That yeah. happened after last comic standing. Why? Because I did a ton of material on the show and I was writing new stuff and yeah. I started finding the world funnier than me. Oh really? That's, okay. Yeah, that's what it was. It was at a time when we had what we had Bush. Yeah. We had Paris Hilton. We had Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. We we were just starting to go crazy. Like, now we're deep. But we're back deep. then, we were just starting. And I just f- started finding that stuff yeah. funnier than, you know, talking about my relationships or, or something at the house or, you know, okay. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's when my act started changing and I just became more and more like social commentary yeah. and what's going on in the world. And then people started asking me to do it like i started right. getting booked let me tell you something barack obama being elected was so good for my career it cause, was because it was like oh we got the black politics guy yeah, yeah. let's call him and and right. it really started yeah it started a whole thing to where at one point a couple of years ago i was like wait a minute am i becoming a pundit i don't want to be a pundit wow. <laughs> you know same thing exact same thing happened to me yeah, when, when I, Barack was elected, because you know he's half white, half black. Right, so you so covered I got the, the white other side. Half. Yeah, wow. Someone had to. Wow, so we both, <laughs> bro, come on, guy. Wow. Wow, that's incredible. I yeah. love that. Yeah, but um, what, what would you say right now? And by the way, when you said we kind of went over the edge, what, for, where were we at then, and where do you think we are now on a scale of one to 10? Well, I'll put it this way. Remember the good old days when Sarah Palin was crazy? Yeah, right. Right? Like, that's what we thought. So if, yeah. Sarah, if Sarah Palin, at that time, she was probably an eight. Right. But now I'm going to give her a four oh, and right. put our society at, a, yeah. at at least a seven. But Marjorie Taylor Greene is a nine. You know you what's know. interesting? <laughs> yeah, what you said there is, is like, so true because... He, at that point, it was like one focal point. Like you, right. you went to a person, an individual. And what you just said is society. And whereas before you could find like one person that you thought was nuts or over the top, it feels like everybody's going over the ledge now. Like on all sides, all walks of life, whether it's a political issue, a social issue, a, a, a stupid issue about a, a zoning law in a neighborhood, like everyone's just like falling we were- over the edge. We were talking about this because this happened in sports, right? Sports, yeah. the all the announcers now, they're like they're they're angry and they're outraged over something and yeah. they, they don't like this athlete or they don't like and it it's I guess it's what you have to do to be heard above the noise. 
Yeah. You you had like like you said, even local issues. Like when did people start yelling at the school board meeting? Like nobody even yeah. knew there was a school board meeting. Yeah, yeah. Now you get a video of a person going absolutely psycho and it's like, well, now we, we understand your kid's problem. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only they're going nuts, but then instead of the school board going, Oh, we're public servants, we're public schools, we're here to service you and your family and your children. Now they get belligerent and push back. Right, And right. they go, well, we're going to get our union together and we're going to come after you and we're going to sue you and we're going to make your life miserable and we're going to single out. Like, it's, it's, everything's a fight now, man. That Yeah, you just nailed it. Wow. You just nailed it. Everything's a fight. Even, even some things that are like common sense, but people fight it just because, well, I can't go along with you, right? Yeah. I have to. Yeah, I have to fight. So it it's yeah. I I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. My thing, you know, when global warming fully kicks in, I'm heading to Canada, man. I'm moving to Are your you old really? spot. Oh yeah. yeah. Once once it melts, you know, well, once it melts, I'm heading up. Well, well, you know, it gets hot from the head down, right? So Canada's gonna be like a tropical playground soon. <laughs> but you know, what? here's the thing. Back me up on this. You've heard of Captain America, obviously. We yes. all know Captain yes. America. What I've learned now is people, when they fight, it's partly because of this. When you see out these videos, it's like, hey, man, go ahead. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, officer. Hey, you with the shopping cart. Right. Hey, you and my neighbor. Like, people are using their phones like it's a Captain America shield. Like, it's it's going to protect them. Well, it's, yeah. It's, I, it's bizarre. It's, um... <clears throat> I mean, that's part of it, though, right? Because we are all carrying a video camera with us at all times. Yeah. And and even that is something that people decided, okay, I'm going to be famous just because I have this video camera, right? I'm going to just do something. Yeah. Like they, I just read a thing that they arrested this couple. They were staging car accidents for YouTube. Oh, come on. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't surprise yeah. me. Yeah, and, and you just like. Well, and and now they're going to jail. So now they're famous for that. You know, now it's, yeah, it's yeah. now, oh, we got to set up the YouTube cameras at our trial and yeah. when we go to jail. So I, it's, a, it's a strange thing. I'm not necessarily, I'm not one of those, like, I'm not the old get off my lawn, it's all bad. Yeah. It's just that the, the level of stupidity you have to deal with, man. It just, it, my last special was called Stupid Don't Get Tired because yeah. stupid don't get tired. You no. get tired. Stupid, yeah. stupid's like, nah, I can keep going. You, your next special <laughs> might be called uh, Retard Stays Wide Awake. How about that? Or Tard Never Sleeps. But, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, you look at TikTok, right? And this is where we see half this stuff now. You see a guy, you know, people doing things that are that yeah. are you didn't used to see. And in my head, I'm like, this is why they call it TikTok. Because the more you watch this stuff, the more it kind of persuade your brain that this is the normal and i get to the point where i go it's just a matter of time till i'm doing that <laughs> and so i'm like tick tock tick tock today i'm gonna wrap myself in bacon and stand in front of a bison tick tock tick tock. today i'm gonna punch my neighbor in the face with a two by four tick tock tick tock like, i feel like we're all just these ticking clocks is, ready to go off now you know and i love that you mentioned mentioned the bison because that is one of them i follow it's what's it called torons what? which is a combination of tourists and morons of Yellowstone. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's those people like, hey, I want to take a selfie with a bear, you know, right. and, or or hanging off the side of the Grand Canyon, you know, and it's like, yeah, we're going to miss you. Yeah. yeah, you know what? No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. But now the the funny thing, this, this we need to ban TikTok, right? Yeah. You know, what there you is think? no better way to get kids on TikTok than to say yeah. we're going to ban yeah. TikTok. Because first of all, they're better at the technology than their parents, right? Yeah, so yeah. you think they're blocked. They're, they're yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everything, like they're writing down a list. Oh, I'm not supposed to watch that. I'm not supposed to watch. Like it, it, there's nothing better. There's no, TikTok is yeah. laughing. They're like, yeah, please, yeah. please tell the kids you're going to ban TikTok. Yeah. So all kids who had no interest are suddenly, yeah. well, I got to get on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just waiting to do their thing. TikTok, TikTok. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, you can, you know you can't stop it, right? This is this is 
this goes back to right what rock and roll was going to ruin the kids yeah, right yeah. then hip hop was going to ruin the kid like yeah. every generation of kids something's going to ruin the kids so now tiktok's going to ruin the kids and yeah well it's weird too because what we were just saying about everything going over the edge i i try to stand back and be objective about it and be a third eye and i go okay take away all my emotion take away my age take away all my experiences just look at the world now and all this stuff's happening from you know the gender stuff to to sex stuff to social stuff and then i sit here and i go am i am i the old guy am i the old guy going oh you kids are gonna ruin everything you know what i mean yeah i don't think so Uh, yeah and it's also the fact that we're comics right so comics are always we're naturally kind of open-minded observers yeah and we're around, I think being a comic, we're around young people enough to be in touch with that. Like, like I'm not pretending I'm 25 anymore, but yeah. I'll go out and the, the room will be full of 25 year olds. So, yeah. you know, you, you kind of get that. And the, some of these things, this is what's funny, like the gender thing, right? Yeah. This is what's hilarious to me about it. Transgender people make up less than 1% of the population, like... If, less than that, yeah. less than one point one percent, probably. Right. right. So, so you know, if you're in Kansas and you're yelling about, oh, I don't want transgenders in my school, like, yeah. they're, not. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. Yeah, they're not. There's just yeah. not that many of them. They're, they're not. You know what I mean? Like, you like should be here. more worried about children of the corn in right. your school than <laughs> right. transgenders. We're we're in L.A. Right. We're yeah. right above Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see some transgender yeah. people. Yeah. If if you're yeah. in in rural Mississippi. Nah, not yeah. so much. Yeah, they're, they're, you'll be okay. There's nobody going to the bathroom. You yeah. got to worry about. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, so that's the and that's what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Like you said, you go down the rabbit hole, right? So you start getting on videos, and and after a day and a half of not coming up for air, suddenly transgenders are out to get you. Yeah, right. And it's like mm, yeah. not really. This, you know, are there drag queen shows in elementary schools? No. Yeah. Are there? <laughs> no. There, there's drag queen shows down on Hollywood Boulevard at some, you know, club somewhere yeah. or whatever. But but schools don't have the budget for drag for, queens. They don't have, yeah, yeah. They barely have the budget to put on, like, uh, you know, uh, Little Orphan Annie, right. let alone a drag queen show. Right. Drag queens aren't working for free. And by the, yeah, by the way, a good drag queen show in Vegas is like $65. Thank so, you. you know, instead of just doing it for the kids, bring the whole family and uh, have a night out. Yeah, it's, you know, that, that point you made. I mean, yeah, people get, we get caught up in watching these videos. That's why you got to have reality, man. You got to yeah. step out. Yeah, yeah. And we're kind of forced to because we work yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. We got to be like in tune with all that stuff. But when you're sitting at home just watching those videos 24 yeah. hours a day, and then they, the way the algorithm works, when you watch one, it's like, well, you may also like. You know, yeah. you may, and then they just start sending you more and more of them. You know. Again, what happened to the good old days? Porn. It was just yeah. some good old porn, yeah. and then you just didn't tell anybody about it, and you went to work. Yeah. <laughs> now what is it? Now it's like, it, it, it's almost like the porn's right on TikTok almost. I yeah, mean, yeah. That I way mean, there are, there are men and women wearing stuff that's like, you know, dental floss. Right, and then you got the, the OnlyFans and this, you know, and it's... It's I don't know. Wild man. I don't know. Wow. Are you an influencer? Uh well, it depends. I mean, I mean pick a category. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm an influencer in some ways. Like, like, aren't we all sort of influencers in a way? Yeah, I think there's a number though. I don't know. It used to be forty thousand. It's probably more than that. But when you get that number of followers, oh really? Then they call you an influencer. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Yeah, it's a certain number, but I don't know exactly. Oh, wow. Well, I have, I think I've got like 105,000 followers on yeah. my Instagram. So you're I'm, an a tri- I'm a triple influencer. Yeah, you're an influencer. I'm an, I'm an influencer, but no one's listening. What do you mean? <laughs> no, sure they are. <laughs> no, I think that's how that's how the people make money off of it, right? When you have yeah. all those followers, then you start selling ads. Do you do that? On your Instagram. I don't do I have uh, someone who does my social media, and yeah. she's the one who told me. She said, like, okay, you're eligible to get this much. And my accountant told me last month, and it's good you're sitting down because you're probably not ready for these kind of numbers. Uh-oh. But I made $121 last month, so oh, I'm dear. pretty much going to give up comedy. 
and go with influence from here on out. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Drop your retirement guy. Wow. You should be able to get an egg roll and maybe a cracker every month. Wow, dude. Well, I want to say something because you're 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 a first for this podcast. You're the physically biggest person to do the podcast. Like you're All what right. six six three six three yeah. And you're like I, I'm gonna ask because people want to know. Today, have you snapped a school bus in half or a Greyhound I, bus? I have not snapped a school bus in okay. half. I actually sat behind one in traffic coming over here because you okay. know they're they're. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. They were close. The construction thing is interesting because construction always looks like a lot of work's getting done, but you never really know what they're doing. Yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> lot of orange cones yeah. and red flags, and you're just like, man, you guys look really busy. And then you come back when it's done and, and nothing's different. You're like, well, what? So I was stuck behind a bus, and I did, but I did not snap it in half. A wow. good power to have, though. Have you I, ever, my insurance doesn't cover that sort of thing. Have you ever punched a whale? No, not not so far. Whales live in the ocean, so I let them have that. Wow. They, is it is whale punching? Is that a thing? See, that might be a new thing. That might be what what that might be the uh, the influencer the, the, in you. the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that might be the latest Instagram challenge. You got to punch a whale. <laughs> Next time I'm working the Laugh Factory in Long Beach, I'll jump across the street to the aquarium punch and a whale. just just deck a whale. And <laughs> what would that feel like? I wonder. Like they got blubber right under that skin. Like you punch a whale, does your fist like go in? I'm guessing a human punch a whale doesn't even notice. Yeah, yeah, I, what right. what, yeah, what yeah. a human punch yeah, a whale? Yeah. It would just keep going. It would yeah, just, yeah. you know. <laughs> That's like a like a flea landing on us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh the human man. punched me. If they if they laughed, they would be telling the story. Yeah. And then a human, <laughs> he just came up and punched me. It was the cutest thing. Well, that's the thing I've seen on TikTok now. Now they got these things. Well, you, have you seen them? Whales are coming up, and people are like kissing them and yeah, rubbing again, them. And I'm like, again, you're just you're asking for trouble. Like, what was it? The I think 2021 was one year. Yeah. Where they had more people falling into the Grand Canyon than ever because of because of Instagram. Yeah, they wanted to take videos, you know, hanging Idiots. over the side. And I said, you know who doesn't fall into the Grand Canyon? The mules. Yeah, right. right the right. mules. The mules yeah. walk up and they're like, "All right, that's as far as I go." Yeah, yeah. See that fence? Yeah, yeah I don't climb fences. The mule. The, that's where I get to stupid. Like, how yeah. much smarter is the mule than you? The mules, like, yeah, hey, you go ahead. You have fun. I'm going to be right. <laughs> well, you know what the irony of that is? Another name for the mule is ass. Yeah. And they're, the asses are probably walking along, seeing some idiot out on a ledge going like this and just going, <laughs> ass. Right? It's like total reversal of you, creature. I, I, and and the reason there's no protection against that is because yeah. no one ever thought you'd be that stupid. Right? They're like, well, there's a railing and a fence and a sign. They didn't think you'd actually be so dumb as to cross all of that. And it's like, well. Idiots. Have you ever seen someone like in real life do one of these things where they do something really stupid or they, they, they're, they're clearly doing like a social media something or other? No, uh, I never had that. I'll tell you the one I did have, and it, it happened at the Laugh Factory in Long Beach. Yeah. I walk outside, and this girl in lingerie is posing on my motorcycle. Wow, yeah, what a she, stroke of and luck. And I was like, I was like, no, no, go, have fun, yeah. do your thing. And she's like, it's for Instagram. I was like, well, I was, I was hoping so. I wow. didn't think you were just doing it, but yeah, that was wow, a, that was a really like weird, surreal kind of moment because that means yeah. she was either walking or driving around in lingerie, yeah. looking for somewhere to take pictures. What a treat, too, to come out. Like, you know, you, you're, you're probably thinking, worst case, you come out, some guy's jacking your vehicle or someone's <laughs> trying to steal it. You come out and you got Miss February laying across exactly. the seat. Exactly. Wow, bro. Nice. Um, I was once down on Melrose Boulevard. And, you know, some of these buildings, they paint murals on the yeah. side of them and stuff. So I'm just walking and I come around a corner and I look. And you've ever seen these kids on Instagram that do like the choreographed dancing? They'll right, dan right. They like just randomly, they just start dancing. They start dancing. dancing. Group. Yeah. And this one girl, you know how Beyonce does that really kind of violent, mm -hmm. kind of jerky? Yeah. 
and some girl was doing it and she was like, I don't know, she looked like she was 21 and really wasn't good at it, but she was like doing all this stuff. And I just, I just looked at her. I was like, you look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Like yeah. it, it actually made safe. me angry. Beyonce's safe. Yeah. Man. No one's taking yeah, the no, job. But it was just like, it was almost like annoying. I was like, stop. I hope I never see that anywhere. Yeah. There's freak. I, I don't know. I, I mean, again, it's just that thing of getting likes, right? Just being, yeah. being famous for being famous. And, and don't they realize they don't have to go on Instagram? They're going to be liked if they just drape themselves over your vehicle and lingerie. Right that out. usually is a good way to make friends. I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. It'll be popular. Speaking of yeah. motorcycles, my friend. Yes, sir. Somebody might have bought you a little present. Uh-oh. For your trip here today. Uh-oh. Somebody might have. All right. I'm standing by. Did you buy yourself a present? I did not get myself a gift, but I'm looking at that can of creamed possum. <laughs> and don't think I'm not thinking of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if the fans have seen that. <laughs> no, they haven't seen it. Uh, there you go. Creamed possum. Have you ever had creamed possum? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Oh, man. If you want to read the ingredients, go that ahead. Is, uh, well, oh, uh-huh. with sweet potatoes garnished <laughs> in coon fat gravy. Yeah. So you get cream possum and coon fat gravy. This <laughs> yeah. is this can't be too healthy. <laughs> raccoon, I like it though. Raccoon gravy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were speaking of your your motorcycle, and I got I got you a little present, buddy. Uh oh. I hope you like it. Look at this. I like it. That's for you, I a like Ducati. It. A Ducati race bike. That's for you, my friend. I will add this. I have a little collection you of do? Uh, bike models. This will definitely go on the shelf. This is very cool. Isn't that cool? Very cool. Very cool. Now, when Thank you, you, sir. You're welcome, buddy. When you ride, I got to ask you, did you ride hot? Do you ride, like, hard? Or do you ride ripe? 20, 20 years ago... I rode like this, the sport bikes in the canyons. I rode on racetracks, and I didn't race, but it, it was, you know, a speed thing. Now, it was. Now I'm cruising, man. I'm comfortable now. So you, you know? went from, because Ducatis are, like, built for speed, right? Yeah, yeah. And now you're what? You're more like a Harley guy, just, like, rolling? Yeah, yeah. I have BMWs, Hondas. Oh, wow. I'm thinking I may get a Harley. The thing, the thing about Harley is when you yeah. buy a Harley, you buy into that whole culture. Yeah, it becomes that's, like a club almost. That's the part I'm not sure about. But, yeah. you know, I look at Ducatis like 25-year-old women. Like, oh, yeah. They they were fun to ride back in the day. Now now they're just good to look at. Yeah. I, <laughs> you, you don't want to spill one. You don't want to get involved in that anymore. Yeah. That, that's not going to end well. Did you ever but, drop your, a bike? Did yeah. You ever, yeah. Oh. I um, You know, it, I broke my wrist twice 20 years apart. I did it when I was 18 and then again when I was 38. Uh, just, you know, because you go down and you, you put your hand out, yeah, right, yeah, instinctively, yeah. and yeah. my wrist, wrist snap. Oh, really? So, yeah. But did you just spill, like, did you hit something or did a car? No, like... one time a car hit me, a oh, car God. sideswiped me, and then the other time we were on the racetrack, and there's a great story on um, – wikipedia right yeah. so, so i don't know who puts stuff on wikipedia yeah me neither my middle name is but. apparently michael somehow <laughs> and i'm not even joking harlan michael williams i had a bike crash um at a um little track called button willow oh, and whoever wow. wrote the story wrote up the story like i was the greatest motorcycle racer of all time like i'm not changing this yeah. That's a great story. That's, That's great so story. much better than what actually happened, you know. And it's funny because <sighs> motorcycle racers, they're like jockeys. They're they're literally half my size. They, yeah, you a little, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in racing, you want a little guy because yeah. he's lightweight and he's small, yeah. you know. So whoever wrote this story, I was like, oh, there's no way in hell I'm changing that. Yeah, yeah you got to leave that. Yeah, Alonzo I, Michael Bolin is <laughs> on in Button Willow. Button Willow crash. Mm. By the way, where we where's Button Willow? That sounds like Lord of the Rings. Country. Button Willow is in you know beautiful Bakersfield because <laughs> Jeez, there's room. Sounds like you were driving and you hit an <laughs> elf or something. I mean, Button Willow. Yes. Yeah, I I had uh, I used to have a Honda Shadow like okay a, a nice s- yeah seven fifty and it was mm-hmm. more of like a cruiser. That's a cruiser bike, yeah. Yeah, and I, I I I never dropped it, but one time I was coming up one of the canyons, and you know sometimes when cars are driving every now and then they'll just like 
shit a little bit of oil. Yep. Like a little little puddle will just, they hit a mm. bump in it. So I was just driving, clear day, dry roads, and I'm just driving, and all of a sudden my, my whole bike just went, like it's like I hit ice almost. Yeah, just a quick... Oh, my God. And the whole bike just... Mm. And I was able to grapple it and keep it going, but mm. I almost went flying. Well, man. your I, ass tightens up. It pulls the bike yeah. right up under you. Does it? Yeah, <laughs> like a back... Of, <laughs> yeah. Just like Luke Skywalker's hover car, man. Yeah. I've had... You know, I've had a few close calls. And, you know, people ask what it's like riding yeah. in L.A. I said, it's like playing a giant game of Frogger. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. live. Yeah, yeah, live yeah. Live game of Frogger. But it's the... I'm so used to it. I grew up, I always wanted a bike. I yeah. got one. I've been in, you know, I've been riding them all yeah, my yeah. life. I've been in love with them forever. And you just get used to getting around town so much quicker. Yeah. Not having to sit in traffic. So. Do you white line? Do you oh, go yeah, absolutely. See, that's something I absolutely. never got the courage to do. Like, I, all, I, for those of you that don't know what white lining is, it's, it's when cars are on the highway and you get that space in the middle and some guys do it, and some guys do it fast. Do you do you wail up it? Here's the thing about riding a motorcycle. If you live through your 20s, you'll be okay. Yeah. Because in your 20s, you're crazy. That's, so in your 20s yeah. is when you're flying between the cars. Yeah. And then you get older, you're like, man, maybe I'll... I'll keep moving, but I'll slow down some, you know. But yeah. um, there's more room in between cars than people think. Yeah, there so is. There is. So when you're riding, it's not like you're, you know, right up against them. And yeah. People, people, most people are cool with it. Every now and then you get the car that gets mad at you, so they try to cut you off or block yeah. it. But, yeah, it's something I'm just so used to doing. And I'll tell you, um, the cops do it, right? Why? Motorcycle cops. They, they do the white line? Yeah. Yeah, and they got those fat, they got like the baskets on the there's side. There's nothing better than getting behind a motorcycle cop just cruising up the 405. Because right. no one's going to get in his way. No one's yeah. going to. And they, and the cops don't mind. There'll be a yeah. row of bikes behind them. They like, like it because they think they're the king of the car. Yeah, they're leading the parade. And we're yeah. like, yeah, you're saving me time. And, and I ain't got to worry about these cars. So, oh. yeah. I have a story. This might make you a little jealous. When I was like, I think I was like nine or ten years old or something, my dad took me to see Evil Knievel jump 13 Mack trucks. Oh, wow. Like, I saw it That's live. That's very cool. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Remember Evil Knievel? That, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you a, a trivia story. Oh, here we go. Um, I was working in Tampa, and this woman at the show, she said, yeah, my mom was Evil Knievel's nurse, like, toward the end of his life. Wow. like he Because he... He broke every Everything. bone in his body oh, yeah. in the course of his life. So when I think he, he broke one of my bones. <laughs> I mean, that guy broke everybody's, yeah. So when he got old, he needed help, you know, because mm -hmm. his body was literally all busted up. Oh, yeah. And this woman was like, yeah, my mom was Evil's, Evil Knievel's nurse. Wow. So but really? that would have been awesome to see it live. What was it, it had to be. You, oh, you still it remember a, it. I remember it vividly. <laughs> and and it's, it's like the guy, he just... You know, when you're a little boy, it's yeah. even more fantastical. It's like seeing Santa Claus and this guy just, you know, the anticipation, and he just floated over it. And, and back then, we didn't have where you saw guy. Now guys are doing, like, right. flips. and mm. But back then, it was a very unique thing, and it, it, and, and it was crazy. Yeah, well, you know, the, the thing about fame back then, if somebody was famous like Evil Knievel. They earned it. Everyone knew who they were. Yeah. You know, like you said, now you got stunt guys and you guys flipping on bikes. And some of them, I've been to some of these stunt shows and these guys are incredible on the bikes. Yeah. But no one knows who they are. Yeah. They're yeah. not. Yeah. But Evil Knievel, like everyone in America, like. The like, whole world knew who You that knew guy who was. Evil Knievel was, yeah. And that yeah. name, what was the, was it, she said he was his nurse? Yeah. Imagine her going for her next job and hands in the <laughs> resume. Says here you worked for uh, Evil <laughs> Uh yeah, next it's like it's like you, I don't know if you want that on uh, your resume. Yeah, it worked for evil. But that was a it was a whole different it was a different oh, time, oh, you know. Dude. And it wasn't that long ago, you know. Yeah, that's but it true. was Yeah. And that you know, I, I feel like it's a good point you brought up because I feel like the the luster and the shine has kind of gone off of celebrity and and big stars. Like even even when someone kind of gets to a certain level of fame things go so fast now it's like i'll i'll binge watch an, a really good like netflix show or hbo show or something 
and I watch it so fast, I don't even know the name of the actor. Right. And even if they were amazing, it's too late. I'm on to the next binge watch. Yeah. Well, that's why now when you have someone, like you mentioned Beyonce, like yeah. to be that famous now yeah. is incredible because yeah. there's so many others that you're up against. And you not know? only that, they're all sort of ripping off her. Like right, she, they're doing. She kind of started with all that, right. like kind of, I don't know what that's called, yeah. but it's sort of like, <laughs> Almost like, remember that dance they called Stomp or whatever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost like she incorporated some of that really like violent, jerky movement. Right. And work. then you look back, I think uh, Janet Jackson was the first one to do like those big production music videos yeah, with a yeah. whole group dancing, yeah. you know. And But uh, like in comedy, yeah. Uh, I don't know when you started. I started in 93. But I always tell people, like, I miss the 80s. Like George Wallace, so he's like, man, you miss the 80s. You know, think about when you did Johnny Carson back then, oh. like 30 to 40 million people saw it because yeah. there were only three channels. I know. So everyone was watching. If you were on Johnny, everyone saw you, you know. And I did, I did The Tonight Show plenty of times with Jay Leno, and Jay is great, and the yeah. show was super fun. Yeah. But it wasn't like when Johnny had it, when he could call you over to the couch and give you a career. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, if you, if you got on that show, you, you had your career. Yeah. And I got lucky because I started comedy in the 80s, mm -hmm. and but I was in Canada, so I, I couldn't really get into the slipstream to get on Johnny. And so when I finally moved to L.A., Johnny was in, I think, his last three years of doing the show. Yeah. So what I did get to do is go and be live in the studio. I went and saw it twice. Cool. So I got to see him. Yeah. But I never got to go You never on. got to do it, yeah. But I sort of was lucky because I got into the, the next tier before it all seemed to fade away, and that's when Letterman kind of got his own show in, in the, you know, the yeah, prime Letterman, time slot. Yeah, Letterman was big. That was big for a number of years. Yeah. Like, he was kind of the, 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 the guy who came in behind Carson, and it was like, to get on there, it felt big. It still wasn't like the huge career maker that it didn't hurt it still meant something but isn't it funny alonzo now you don't even hear comics talking about putting a set together for late night like that that used right. to be the thing oh i'm putting a set together for conan or for letterman or leno or where and now you don't even guys i gotta be honest try. i wouldn't even know where to start yeah you know if i had to yeah. put together a, a and and there's still comics fallon still has comics on and stuff and and yeah I wish them all the best, right? Because we're the old veterans now, right? Oh, We've yeah. been there and we know it. And yeah. I say, let's, man, enjoy it. It's not the same as Carson, but it's still the Tonight Show, you know? So oh, enjoy yeah. the experience. It's still a big deal. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't even know how to begin putting it. Like, um, America's Got Talent reached out to me. And I was yeah. like, no, man, I can't. I don't know how to put those sets together anymore, let, let alone yeah. four or five of them. And you know it's just such the a, shorter the shorter set because they're really short. On they're America's really short, and it, it's really like TV clean. Like you can't you can't push any buttons. Like yeah. no, I want to make fun of idiots. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. On that show, that's mean, right? Yeah, that's you, right. You know, you can't. Yeah. So I'm like, no. All right, thanks for reaching out, but yeah, yeah. That's, you know what's interesting too is it's you said it. It it's it's different because. I did The Tonight Show when Jay was hosting it. I did The Tonight Show when Conan hosted it for that brief, I think it was yeah. seven months or something. Mm -hmm. And then the last two times I've done The Tonight Show was with Jimmy. And, and it was really interesting because when I did it the last time with Jimmy, all that sort of pressure, even though it's good pressure, you're excited to be yeah. there. But there, it's intense. Like, it used to be sort of career-making mm -hmm. and career-defining. And I realized the last time I did The Tonight Show, it was great to be there. It's still a big thing. But I didn't feel any of that, that like, kind of pressure to, to destroy it. And I went out, and I was so loose and so, like, sort of carefree because it was like, I'm just doing a fun spot. Right. Right. And, and as much as it's an honor and a privilege to be there, it doesn't carry all the weight that it used to. And so it actually made it sort of silly and fun. It, it, was, a, it was a whole different energy, I felt. Oh, I, yeah. I know that feeling. I had yeah. that experience at the Apollo. Yeah. Because the first time you do the Apollo, you, you're scared to death. Because you are? It, yeah, because yeah. it's the Apollo, right? And it has a history yeah. of, first of all, if you're, they tell you, if you're not funny in 30 seconds, they're going to boo you right out of the house, it's right? That, it's that yeah. crazy? Yeah. And, Whoa. but when they, 
if they hate you, they hate you. But when they love you, they love you. Yeah. And so the first set, I didn't get to enjoy the actual experience of like, man, this is the Apollo Theater. Because you were terrified? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got the laughs and yeah. it went good. But when I went back, and I wasn't doing the amateur contest. Like, I was booked to do yeah, yeah. a set. Oh, wow. and, and I got to enjoy the history of, yeah. the, like, you're at the Apollo Theater. I mean, from from... Ella Fitzgerald to James Brown to, wow. to Michael Jackson, Ray Charles, like, you know, uh, Richard Pryor, of course. And yeah. Ed, I mean, it's the Apollo, right? It's yeah. everybody. Yeah. You had to work the Apollo in the black entertainment world. Yeah. You didn't make it until you worked the Apollo, you know? Really? So, that, so that was just, like the kind of target. For, yeah, yeah. So just doing that. And, and the other thing that's funny is when you get there, it's much smaller than you think because you're watching it, it on TV. It looks huge. On TV, it looks huge. It's bigger than life. And then you get there, you're like, oh, wow. Wait a minute. This is this is big, you know, but yeah. but the audience is right on top of you and you, you feel the energy. And it was just such a such a huge experience. I loved it. But the, the, the thing about them loving you or hating you, though, I feel like it's not malicious. I no. feel like it's them going, you know what? We love you in here. But you're not presenting and you're, you're not, not ready, ready yet. yet. That's exactly and it. And so they're, they're like, not doing nope, it to the assholes. <laughs> it, it's them saying kind of in a in a fun sort of, even though it's got to be hard to mm. receive it, they're saying, hey, you're, you're not here yet. Is that kind well, of what it is? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The best story I heard, oh, and boy. I don't know if it's true because, you know, there's stories. It's not about me, is it? No, they, okay. they, they, Ella Fitzgerald went to the Apollo. Oh, God. Booed off the stage. Ella. And she said, oh, next time I'm going to try singing. She was a dancer. <laughs> they, they booed her off as a they dancer. They did her a favor. And she came back, and apparently that singing thing worked out for her. <laughs> What's that called? That kind scatting. of thing? Scatting. Scatting. In Germany, that's yeah. a whole different thing. <laughs> You don't want to see Ella no, Fitzgerald scatting no, in Germany. No, thank no. you. No, thank you. I would boo her off the, stage. The kids, the kids are Googling that right yeah. now, and they're going to be a little surprised. Yeah. If Ella was <laughs> scatting on stage in Germany, I'd be booing through a traffic cone. All right? Boo! No, it was um, oh, that, that was, was one amazing. of those. Uh, yeah, and uh, the talent those people have, you know, and I've always loved jazz. The oh. What I love about it is the creativity. It's like... Okay, I'm gonna sing an entire song with no words. Yeah, uh, just you just play music, and I'll just scoop it, beep, bop, beep, 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 and then it's it's like wow, you're perfect. And a friend of mine who's a producer in jazz, he said oh. he said yeah, for them their voice that's an instrument. There's like the piano, and there's there's the the bass, and there's the drums, and there's you, and you're another instrument in the band, and that's how the voice works. It, it's can I do something for you? Put those headphones on. I'm going to scat for you for a minute. I'm ready. Just just as I'm a little. Ready. I hope the audience can hear this. Oh, they can hear it, but I want you to hear it in your headphones. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm in isolated experience. Well, if you're going to laugh, maybe. I'm not laughing. I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying. Scooby Doo and the Mystery Machine. Doodly da da da. Scoop doo doo. Scoo. See, th this is why I said I'm enjoying because there's another talent that Harlan has. There's another one that we people. There's another talent he has. We had no idea, yeah. and yet there it is. Harlan Williams scatting, and you heard it here first. <laughs> You know what? You almost sold that too good. Like it's like it's like I love the sarcasm, and I went, "No, he really means it." No, really. It, I mean, come on. It, there's, I don't know anyone as genuinely unique as you. You don't? No, honestly. Oh, you, thank you, you, and and you've always been that. Yeah. And, and I tell people this is my favorite. You may not remember this. You oh probably boy, don't. here we go. But what did my, I do? My all-time favorite uh -oh. Harlan Williams moment. Uh -oh. You were doing a set at the Laugh Factory, and in the middle of it, this woman actually raised her hand and just looked at you and said, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> it was, 
It was so perfect because it was like, yeah, if you just walked in off the street, yeah. you had no idea what you were about to experience. It was, it was, it was beautiful. <laughs> what no, did you, I say to her? Do you remember? I, I, you, you, she was so. <laughs> <kind> of, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the answer didn't matter. The question was the beauty of oh it. She was, God. she was genuinely confused. I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I used to listen to Ella Fitzgerald all the time. Every now I, and then I still do. Um, do, you rem, do you remember, speaking of the Laugh Factory, I don't know if you'll remember this name. Do you remember Moon Jones? Yes, absolutely. I remember Moon. Remember when, so we, Alonzo and I have known each other for what, 25 years yeah, now? Maybe yeah. a bit longer. Mm -hmm. And we do our sets at the Laugh Factory and we'd hang out in the lobby and we'd be out there, me, you, and there was this other guy, Moon Jones, and the reason I, there's two reasons I love him. One, that name. I, can, I, I just love that name. I could never get forget that name. I remember Moon, absolutely. And then he was about your size yeah, he was almost. A big dude. Mm -hmm. But he was the most gentle, nice, like yeah. friend, like almost like Winnie the Pooh esque. Yeah, he was a sweetheart. And he was he was doing stand up, kind of dipping in and out of it. Right. But I, I don't think he sort of got over. Do you know what happened to him? I That's have, why I'm asking. I have no idea. I have no idea. You know, there are so many <sighs> people we've crossed paths yeah. with. And you don't know, you know, I have a friend right now who, um, his name's Stan Davis. And back when I started, he was from St. Louis. And, and yeah. we're doing open mics together and this and that, you know. And he kind of leaned into, he got into acting and he got, that kind of came his thing. And now he's one of the stars of this show on ABC called Abbott Elementary. Oh, you know, wow. and, I, and I'm so happy for him because you know how you, like you said, you lose touch with yeah. people and you're like, eh, I wonder what they're up to. Wonder yeah, what they're, they're doing. they're working at a Walmart this in Ohio yeah, or you something. You have no yeah. idea yeah. what they're doing. And then boom, he's on a like big hit oh, I love that. comedy show. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's one of those things where people see the show that, you know, everyone thinks you just rolled in and got a TV show, you know, <laughs> and it's like, no, man, this guy earned it. This guy has been grinding it takes for a forever. long time. Yeah, and it, it's I, I and I appreciate when people say it, you know, cuz yeah. their hearts in the right place, but they're like, "You should have a TV show." I'm like, "Yeah, I should." You know, yeah. why don't you why don't we make a call? Yeah. Why don't you just uh, make that happen? Uh, finish your uh, bagel over there and why don't we make that happen? Yeah. I know it's almost it's almost disrespectful, but the other side of it is people don't know. They you don't know. know. They don't know the pro every now and then you get someone that just Opens the door and boom. Yeah. But for most people in this industry, it's, it's this arduous climb and it's up and down and, and you never ever get there. It's right. just a, it's always a dangling carrot, but, but you find the places that, that you enjoy and you try to get to places that you know will be fulfilling for you creatively. Right. I yeah. You got to so. love doing it yeah. because you, if you do this for the money, you won't last Yeah, because you're not going to get it, you know, not right away. Yeah. It comes and, and you got to love it. And yeah, like you said, you find your niche, you find things that you enjoy doing creatively. Yeah. And that's what we do, you know? And, and I always say that this is the lottery business, right? Yeah. We're in the lottery business yeah. because you're, you're working and you grind and you get a hit show or a movie or something like that. And now you're making this guy was in Vegas and this guy said, man, would you want to do a TV show? And I was like, you mean what I want to make? couple of hundred thousand bucks a week yeah and not talk to you yeah yeah, yeah i'll go for that yeah. <laughs> but no i mean that's what it yeah. is that that's yeah. the you know and on these big shows now um people are making you know what was it friends and so you're making a million dollars a show like a million bucks yeah. a week yeah that's, that's a good job Insane. yeah the voice actors from the simpsons oh man they, making... they, they don't even know how much money they have those are the people with all the Simpsons residuals and this oh. and that, I promise you oh, they have no idea how much money they have. They're just, you know, or uh, Law & Order. Oh, just right? like Law & Order's on right now. There's never a time Law & Order is not on TV, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's always on. It's always on. It's even on during the commercial. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, during the commercial one channel, you flip yeah. to another channel. Hey, Law & Order's on. I just want to watch a commercial or two, and I always get fucking Law & Order yeah. getting in the way. <laughs> so I don't know if, you know, I don't know where Moon Jones went or where he is, but if for some weird reason he's out there watching, hey, buddy, hope Moon, you're doing well. we miss you. Yeah. You know, that, and that's the thing, though. Today, if he's on social media, you could find him. If I you, know. If you wanted to. 
It'd be so neat. And, and with that name, I mean, I don't know if anybody has that name, Moon Jones. But actually, the first script I ever wrote, that name, like, moved me so much, I, I put it in the script. I actually kind of wrote a character around his yeah. his character because he was such a like a gentle giant and a he nice hung guy. out with a guy named kevin i can't remember kevin's last name and then i did bump into kevin some years ago and kevin was working downtown oh my with, god what uh, if it was um with, if it was kevin bacon then they could have had a kid and called him been. full moon over my hammy <laughs> <laughs> too soon Sorry, man. Yeah. We won't be reaching out. I apologize. Yeah. yeah, Kevin was working with Garrett Morris, and Garrett Morris. Oh yeah, had from a, SNL, right? Yeah, he yeah. had a club downtown. He did. He had a, a. It was like blues and comedy or something like that. And Kevin was working with him, but no, nah, I don't know whatever happened to him with Moon. Wow. Well, I hope you're good. If you're watching, buddy, we're always still thinking of you after all these years. It's wild. Yeah, there's so many people. So many people pass through, or you meet them. Or, yeah. But yeah. you almost did. I I don't know if you did almost go into comedy. But one point in time, and I don't know if I got this right, but weren't you like interested in aviation? I was an airplane mechanic. That was my what? yeah. That was my first oh, job. I didn't I didn't know you were like a mechanic. Yeah, that's what I I did that for wow. ten years before I got into comedy. And the way it led into comedy was teaching new. I got a job training new guys. You yeah. know, teaching new mechanics, and just had more fun making them laugh. Right, right. And, yeah. and when you're in a technical job like that, yeah, probably dropping any type of joke is probably a sweet relief from all the techno jargon. Well, that's so, what it was. Yeah. It, it broke it up. And, and I, you know, I just got it. And comedy was harder because I had to take a writing class because I was like, okay, I can make jokes about airplanes, but how do you come up with material? Like I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah how comics came up with material. Yeah. So I took this writing class and I oh, did it. Oh, I see. And then never looked back. But yeah, I used to uh, used to fix airplanes. So you must know planes pretty good, huh? I, I know how they work. Can I, know I, can I test you? Fire away. I all right. Do let's, something. Let's see. Ready? I'm ready. That's a great question. What was it? Seven thirty-seven takeoff. Dude, I told you. I'm All right, ready. Can I try another one? Fire away. <clears throat> yeah, that was a fighter jet. Took off much quicker. And yeah. did you see what it did? It did a loop the loop. <laughs> All right, one, one more. Fire away. I'm ready. I had no idea it'd be working this hard. Uh, that's a traffic helicopter trying to figure out what's going on on the 110. No, that's oh. Rosie O'Donnell eating a cob of corn. Ah, yeah, I got trick question. Trick question. <laughs> you got two out of three, guy, and that's more than meatloaf got. <laughs> How is meat? God. Imagine, <laughs> imagine evil Knievel and meatloaf hanging out. <laughs> Evil and meat, a night on the town. What well, what would be the third name we could put in there to make the trio? Moon Jones. Evil meat and moon. Evil meat and moon. Wow, that sounds like a, a weird like Cajun restaurant. Yeah, down I was going to say bio. that sounds like somewhere you go after the show at two in the morning. Yeah, yeah. all the comics. Yeah, they're over at Evil Meat and Moon. Evil, evil meat and moon. <laughs> Holy shit! Crazy. Um, you did a bit once that I loved. I don't know if you want to talk about a bit. Absolutely. It, it just Anywhere you want to go. You, you did a, you, you talked about Mr. Potato Head and how mm -hmm. with all, all the kind of the gender phobia <laughs> stuff, like, can we talk about that bit? I love that one. Well, again, this is, this <laughs> yeah. is the crazy Mr. Potato we're Head. into that, that people like there was a national debate over the gender <laughs> of Mr. Potato Head. And, and like I say, if you're, if you're poking a plastic potato, gender isn't the big question. Gender is yeah. the big problem. You're banging yeah. a plastic potato, <laughs> but you want to make sure it's a female potato. Like, no, there's yeah. more to it than that. Yeah. 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 That's what, but that's what I'm talking about, about our society. Yeah. Where you know, nobody stands back and says, well, this whole argument is insane. It's it's a 
plastic potato. Yeah. You're, you're worried about the gender. Yeah. What are you doing to the potato yeah. that the gender is that important? It's, That's the bigger question. Yeah. It's so <laughs> stupid. Did you ever have one as a kid? Yeah, yeah, we all did. You right? did. You just—it's yeah, the weirdest it, toy, a potato. It Think made about no it. sense, right? You poked the the nose in it, yeah. and it had the hat, and you could, yeah. It, listen, they sold pet rocks for how good were the yeah. drugs when they sold a pet rock? Pet rocks, yeah, Mister Potato. <laughs> imagine if you open like. How is a Mr. Potato Head faulty? Like, imagine you opened one and it had leprosy. Hey, this thing's got leprosy. Yeah, send it back. This Mr. Potato Head has cancer. Um, I wonder if it shits curly fries. I have no idea. Now you, you're going to start another national debate now. It's... I bet when Mr. Let's say Mr. Potato Head had a night out. A had, rough night. A rough night. Ate all kinds of, like, spicy Cajun food at the... Evil moon and bacon, or whatever it was. Evil moon and meat. <laughs> you know Mr. Potato Head sitting on the Fisher-Price toilet shitting out curly <laughs> fries, right? And maybe a few tater tots. That might be the end of civilization as we know it. God, man. What toys mm -hmm. did you have as a kid outside of Mr. Potato um, Head? I remember Hot Wheels. Oh, that yeah. was Hot Wheels were, were a big one. Yeah, Tonka trucks, but back oh, yeah. when they were made of steel, when yeah, you, they were they were the you thing. couldn't break one, right? It was a challenge to yeah. try to break a Tonka truck, and it was it was impossible to break. And, I remember those, and they worked like they, the the diggers, yeah, and they the had scoopers the, the and the, they dump worked. trucks and oh, garbage yeah. trucks and all that stuff. Yeah. And you know, think they wouldn't allow kids to play with today, right? They just yeah. they'd be like, oh, his fingers could get caught in there, and it is and it that, and they were like, well, don't. Stick your finger in there, and it, you know. But uh, I yeah. remember those. And yeah. then the usual stuff, uh, stickball and football and stuff like stick that. Stickball? Yeah. What's stickball? Didn't they play that back in the Renaissance? No, man. Stickball. It's, stickball? It's, it's big in the East. I know it's a New York thing. I don't uh -huh. know where else. But you, the bat is a broomstick, you know, a broom handle. Yeah. Yeah, you tape it up, um, and you use that as a bat. And what you do is uh -huh. you'd have a wall... And you paint a square, right? And the square is the strike zone. Yeah. So they'd fire. They had these rubber, the pink rubber ball. I, I don't remember who made them, but they were universal. They were everywhere. Okay. So you'd throw the pink rubber ball. And it, you, could, you could theoretically play with just two people, a pitcher and a hitter, because the ball would bounce off the wall behind the hitter. And, you know, that's how you had balls. This is strikes. a real game? Oh, yeah. Yeah, stickball was huge. Yeah. You play Why didn't stick you just ball? buy, like, a baseball bat? Because you, you didn't have fields. Oh, so New it's York a New York City game. New York City, yeah. You you know, oh. there was a park. There was a park with a baseball field and stuff like that, but you could play stickball anywhere. All you needed was a wall. Dude, that sounds so sad. Mommy, I want to go out and play. You can't. We have no fields. <laughs> can, no, we, can I go out on the lawn? We have no lawn. No. Kids adapt. Kids adapt. Yeah. So stickball but stickball was definitely a, a thing. Huh, that, I, and and I mean there was I did play little league. Like we had a baseball field and stuff, but but if you want to play little league, you gotta have enough people, right? Stickball, yeah. you could play a with two? two or three guys, four guys, and just yeah. What was the objective though? That you can't hit the the ball. Yeah, you did. You hit the ball and then you you know, there'd be a fence for a home run and oh. Whatever, it depend on how far you hit. There were different ways to play. You could, but we basically played it like baseball, except that oh. the the bases might be, you know, the trash can over there is first base, oh, okay. and then the 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 vent, the corpse over on there the curb, is, yeah, yeah, yeah second, and then the, the drunk guy laying there, he's <laughs> yeah. third. You Wait, know? you did you grow up in New York? Like I grew proper? up in Queens. I grew up in oh, what yeah, was that I like? I grew up in New York City. I loved it. I was loved it? it. New York City is the greatest education you can have. Yeah. It just up. feels like that the Queens is just seeped in kind of culture and like there's, Queens a, there's was, a vibe to the neighborhood. Queens was residential, right? Yeah. Queens was like residential as opposed to Manhattan, which was all business. And, yeah, and yeah. Brooklyn is Brooklyn is a planet unto itself, it is. you know. But um, I loved growing up in New York because you're exposed to every culture, right? Every culture in the world is in New York. You yeah. know, it, it's... I grew. I was bused to white schools. I grew up with Jewish kids. You know, I had Puerto you Rican friends. This, that, the other. So you, you just, 
you you meet all kind of people and cultures. I think that's the best thing about the city. Yeah, is you're exposed to everything. Well, what? Because this is something I've never we didn't experience in Canada, but I've heard this my whole life, and I feel a bit stupid that I've never asked about it more. But explain to me what the bust to a white school thing is. Is, it, is this where they? Like, so what tell happened? Me. What happened was the it's the schools weird. in my neighborhood, right? Because I lived in a black neighborhood. Yeah, the schools were full. And the black schools. Yeah, yeah. And it was just black kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, we, you know, neighbor New York. Okay. New York is divided in neighborhoods, right? Okay. Because when immigrants came to New York, New York is one of the city. You you kind of hung out with your own people, right? So if you're yeah. Italian, you get off the boat, Italian, you go yeah. with other Italians or yeah, Greek yeah. or or whatever it might be. So yeah. neighborhoods kind of formed, and um, so I lived in a black neighborhood. The schools yeah. were full. You know, the, oh wow! I mean, you learn more as an adult, right? That the money wasn't being put into the schools in our neighborhood, okay. and so on, yeah. and that's part of racism and segregation and stuff. Yeah. But when you're a kid, you don't know that. You just know that, hey, I can't go to this school. Wait, so. were, were there less schools? Is that like, yeah, is yeah. that why they mm-hmm. part of why yeah. they were less overflowed? Schools, right? Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And so you they. Put you on a, you get on a school bus and you got to ride a half hour, forty minutes, whatever, and you go to a different neighborhood to go to school. So I went to this white neighborhood, okay, and there were Jewish kids. Yeah, and, you know, it's the kind of thing. It's funny now they would fight that, but at that time it's just what they did. Yeah, and it was I was honestly Harlan. All jokes aside, yeah. I was so lucky that happened because yeah. I got a much better education okay. than if I had been gone to a black school because the the unfortunate truth is yeah. that they didn't put as much money into the black schools. The, the classes were more crowded. Right, they, right, they didn't yeah. have the same wow. books and, and whatever else. So I got a better education because I wow. was bused to a different neighborhood, which is, it's, it's a horrible and it's a shame, but that's yeah, the reality that is of horrible. it. horrible. And back then, this was in the uh, 70s, it was really common. And the other thing was, New York, actually, compared to other cities, had an incredible school system. It did. So you could get, like, I went to Aviation High School, which was a specialty school to learn about aircraft. Oh, cool. That's where I learned it. Oh, wow. And they had one for automotive, and they had, like, a vocational school where you could learn plumbing and electrical and stuff. Okay, yeah. You know, obviously, uh, performing arts that show fame. That was the most famous high school. Oh yeah, from the the movie Fame. And yeah. The, yeah, yeah. But they had that for and and it was really you could get a good education in public school, you yeah. know. And and you know we were joking about it in the beginning, but yeah, that would be the idea. Like when so when people fight that now, it's like yeah. you know what what like the idea that people fight against everyone getting a good education. Yeah. That's that's the part that's crazy to yeah. me because it's it's a valuable thing and yeah, and yeah, again it is. I was lucky and it, it's really just a numbers game and luck being at the right time and being sent to this other school yeah. and getting a better education than I would have gotten I mean there was a high school near my house that was at one point it was like the worst high school in the city because it was just it wasn't a school it was a warehouse it was a warehouse was. they just sent kids there and lock them in there for the day. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they didn't, you know, the, 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 the teachers were overwhelmed and so that they couldn't in all, for all practical purposes, like teach a proper curriculum. Exactly. Exactly. So take me through, like, I'm just trying to imagine whether you're Asian or white going to a black neighborhood or Latino going to a whatever neighborhood. Was it weird getting off that bus and there were kids from another Race or di- I, I feel like when you're kids, it doesn't matter that much. That's but did, the good did thing. It, freak did, you out that's, or? it didn't freak me out as much yeah. because I was a little kid. Good, yeah. Because I started in the first grade. By so. the way, sorry to interrupt. That's what I love about kids. None of this shit matters. Right. It seems like all the adults whip all you, this horrible yeah, shit you, up. They teach it to you. Yeah. Go so ahead. When you're, yeah. So when we were kids, you really didn't know. Great. Like I didn't really. I wasn't that aware of it until maybe seventh grade or something then it starts seeping in ninth you know as a teenager it starts seeping in that as the you're age different comes. Yeah, yeah you're different and this and that huh. but no man and again this is what i talk about part of the education and yeah. part of the great thing was growing up around all these kids like like i didn't know anything about 
Judaism or the Jewish religion. Yeah. And we used to laugh. The only thing we knew was they had to go to school again. They had to go to school <laughs> oh, yeah. and then they had to go to Hebrew school. Synagogue and we were like, and, wait, yeah. what? You got to go to yeah. school after school? Yeah, yeah. You know? And, yeah. and then you talk about it, but you talk about it with a curiosity, not with a hatred. Yeah, right. You of know, course, like, oh, yeah. what do you do here and this and that? And, and it was really... Like you said, when you're kids, there's an innocence to it. Oh, I love it. That that opens, a, you know, and it was very cool. And then, and you also, you joke about it. Like, my high school was just completely international. I mean, we yeah. had we had kids from South America. One of my best friends was Korean, you know, yeah. uh, Puerto Ricans. And you laugh about the different cultures. You joke about with, yeah. the, with the Puerto Ricans, yeah. and, and they, they're they speaking Spanish, and you're like, the hell are you talking about, yeah. you know, and, uh, and black kids and, and, and all of that. And it was, you know, I'm sure there were some to whom it was real, but to most of us, it was just funny, man. We were just kids having yeah. fun. It was it was funny. And it feels and, like, because I went to a boarding school where mm-hmm. we lived there. Yeah. And it was kids from everywhere, like Jamaica, China. Like, it was real. And we, we had to live and sleep there and be together all the time. And I found that even when there was any type of cultural difference or pot shot or... Con- it's it's almost like family. You you get over it when you're a kid. You kind of right. you don't take it so personal. You don't you don't hold on to it. It's like oh that guy said that or whatever, and then it's sort of gone. But it feels like as we get older, people try to take this stuff and sort of manipulate it and and weaponize it to a degree. It's yeah. really it's really sad. Weaponize it and and the tribalism. Yeah, you that's know? a very I'm, good. I'm word. in my yeah. tribe and my tribe and yeah. and we have to be better than you or this or that. Yeah. And it's really like, no man, we're, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's one of those things like in the movies, like when earth gets attacked by aliens from another planet, yeah. then suddenly, suddenly that difference doesn't really matter. anymore. That's right? Right. You know? It's, it's so, it's almost like that's what we need. We need some other planet. And they say that they dropped by and they looked around and said, mm, no, nah. Yeah, it's true. And we're like we're like the bl- bad neighborhood of the solar system. We are, man. We are nothing but trouble. And what's interesting too about what you said about tribes is, you know, even if you clearly defined a tribe, let's say you you corral different groups and it was a tribe. Even when you get there, it doesn't work. I was in Rwanda, and I, I'm sure you remember. I think it was back in the in the early '90s. Yeah. There was the genocide. Yeah, where, the Hotel Rwanda yeah, movie. Yeah, where, where did, the right. the Rwandans. There was two tribes. It was the Tutsi tribe, and I forget the other one. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I forget. But these were definitive tribes slaughtering each other, both black mm-hmm. and bodies floating down the river. And I went to Rwanda uh, several years ago and had some long conversations about this stuff. And, and my point is, like, even when you get your tribes and the separation, it still doesn't work. There's always something. And in Rwanda now, it's illegal to reference a tribe. They, they, mm-hmm. took, they took the tribes out of it, and now you're just Rwandan. Yeah. And so even for these people that, like you said, want to separate people and, and put everyone into a group, even once you get there, it doesn't end. So it just shows that universally we're all just the same no matter what you can't well, separate us yeah you have the extremes right and then you have the leaders yeah and those are the ones fighting but the everyday people they're too busy trying to live yeah that's right to fight you know i'm yeah. the the first time i went to israel i went on this uh uso tour yeah that's so great. They, they took us to like bethlehem and stuff which was in the west bank which is palestinian right yeah so they had a you you, the Jewish tour guide would stay on the bus or whatever, and it's Palestinian tour guide, and he would show you around, and then they take you to the souvenir street, Isn't whatever. It silly? Right? Then you go to the Jewish part, you go to the Wailing Wall and stuff. Now the Palestinian guy stays in, and the Jewish guy takes you, but yeah. he takes you on the exact same yeah. thing. And I said, "You guys don't hate each other. You guys just trade hustling Americans, right? You just, <laughs> you, you just yeah, you're yeah. both hustling these yeah, trinkets yeah. and these yeah. doors and stuff, yeah, and yeah. you know. And at the end of the day, it's all business. Yeah, there's yeah. no and and <laughs> they, obviously there's conflicts over there, right? They, the creation of religion and this and that. But when you see the average person, man, the average person." 
they don't have time to hate you. It's yeah. like, you know, I said that if I knew how to say my boss is an asshole in six languages, I'm going to get along with people in six countries, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, teenagers don't listen. It doesn't matter if yeah. you're Jewish or Muslim or Latin or Asian. Teenagers ain't listening to yeah. you, right? Every yeah. parent of a teenager is has the same yeah, experience. Yeah. That's why yeah. it's so funny. Like, there's this, this hatred that they, like you said, over time, and they build it against each other. But if you were to somehow take it away, they'd realize, like, Oh man, my kid don't listen to me either. Yeah, you know my yeah. my my kid stays out too late, or you know yeah. my daughter dates the wrong guy, or yeah. whatever. Like it, it's all the same. Yeah, and and once again with comedians, Dane Cook said something once. This was um, during the pandemic when Black Lives Matter protests were going on. And yeah, this and that. he said something to me that would, it was just very profound. Oh, he said, "Man, it? would it be great if society was like a comics green room?" Oh wow. <laughs> now there's a lot that goes on in a green room so i'm trying to put the pieces together how the, did you the interpret piece, that the interpreting it that there's no no racism no hate no nothing like that in the green room right, right. in the green yeah. room you, you got a black comic you got an asian yeah, comic yeah. you got two women you got yeah. this white guy you got the old guy it's you got the whatever yeah yeah very and, very and it's all just the, the only question in the green room are you funny yeah, <laughs> right? that's, that's right. the only question. Yeah. Are you funny? Yeah, and then we go from there, and then we we laugh at each other's difference or each other's yeah. funny. You know, I thought that was a really profound thing to say. Like, yeah, man, if we got, if we could get along like a green room, where even if you are different, yeah, you can laugh at that. You know, right. it's interesting. I'm, I'm going to be seeing Dane in two hours. We're playing racquetball today. So I'm, really? I'm going to mention that mention to that him. To him. Yeah, yeah, mention that's, that to him. That, that's, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, wow, this has been uh, this has been a really cool fucking sit down and chat, buddy. Absolutely amazing. Um, before we get into the last bit, because okay. I don't want to wait to the end. Uh, Alonzo as you know, an incredible comedian, uh, writer, and can you tell the gang where they can see you and yes, find you? Yes, AlonzoBowden.com or Instagram is so funny, Z-O-F-U-N-N-Y. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm back. You know, like I say, it's a new normal, right? So I'm back on tour. So, yeah, I have uh, coming up, I got Michigan. I have San Francisco. Uh, I got something in Colorado. And, yeah, I'll be, I'll be out there, man. I'm working. Yeah, go see it, Life man. is good. Alondo's not only funny, but you, you finish watching his show and you think about a lot of stuff. Like, you, you, you bring up a lot of topics that that's, make you think, yeah, which that's, I really that's love. That's the best. You know, yeah. you, um, I watch Carlin. I think Carlin was the best at that, and now it's Chappelle, where they're really funny, but they're also going to hit you and make you think. Yeah. And, and that's okay. But you know what I like about you, though? Chappelle, I found, has been getting a little more, almost leaning more towards TED Talk-ish. Yeah. Whereas what I love about you is you you tread the same ground, but you have yours is a little crisper and has like more defined punchlines. Yeah, I'm and, more and of I a... Like, I, personally, I like that better. I'm more of a joke teller, yeah. and he's more of a stream of consciousness yeah, yeah, definitely. kind of guy. And, you know, something for everybody in something comedy. Something for everybody. It's all yeah. good, but I just I like yours because it's sort of like you take me methodically through the funny. You'll pick a topic and, and hit it with like four or five punchlines and move on as opposed to kind of meandering with a long story. So yeah. I, I, I liked that it kind of replenishes over and over. But go see him. Judge for yourself. Judge for yourself. Now, before we go, all right, we do a thing with all our guests. Oh, there's Alonzo. something else under the table. This it's is the last bit. Under the, oh. It's called Words from a Wooden Shoe. That is, that is what, that that's a clog, right? It's a right? Dutch, it's a Dutch clog. clog. It's yeah. a Dutch clog. You know it well, yeah, it sounds like. Yeah, that's a Dutch like. clog you got right there. You don't there. want to ride your motorcycle no. wearing these. No. <laughs> no. You, well, you'd be all right till you stop and put your foot down and just keep <laughs> yeah. sliding. That wouldn't be good. Although this little <laughs> lip might be good for getting under the gears and clicking it up. With you could ship with that. Oh, I don't want to put my foot down in a wooden shoe. You don't want to step in dog shit in these because there's no tread and yeah, you just slide down, down the street like you're Gumby. You just, there's no stopping you. Um, how it works is there's words in here. All right. Reach in, grab one, and then see if it sparks a memory or a story from your life. And, you know, see if you can share something with us. All right. Word, let's see what words I got from a wooden, wooden shoe. shoe. Yeah. All right. All right. 
What do you Check got, guy? Here. What do you got? A laughing fit. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> you ever had a wild laughing fit? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm trying to think of, of particular times when I had it. I'll tell you, okay, I'll tell you a story. Here we go. Um, this wasn't me. I was there to okay. witness okay. it. Okay, it, it doesn't have but to it be was you. But it was one of those times when you're a new comic. Yeah. And you get to see how good a comic can be. Okay. So I am starting out. I'm maybe two years in or something like that. Yeah. And I'm opening for Tommy Davidson, you know, from, oh, yeah. um, and he's coming yeah. off Living Color. Living this Color. Is, this is the yeah. early yeah. 90s. He's hot. He's big. Tommy's a great storyteller, and he can do these different characters in a story and this and that, right? Very physical with so, his face. Right, yeah, right. Great, yeah. 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 So you, you remember the Jerry curl? Remember the drippy curl that black people would do with their Dude, hair? Dude, I had just, one right up till last week. Boom, there you go. So... We're at the old Santa Monica Improv, okay. and this guy in the front row had this jerry curl, right? <laughs> and somehow, and I don't even know how he got there, but Tommy started making the curl. Like, he gave the jerry curl <laughs> its own persona, okay. and the, the juice you spray, whatever that liquid activator oh, stuff was. Oh, yeah, we used to call it jerry, jerry curl, curl juice. Jerry curl juice? Oh, God. <laughs> so now Tommy has the jerry curl juice is a miracle. It's bulletproof, right? Yeah. So this is in the, in the 90s, and the Crips and the Bloods are firing, and oh, this guy shit. can't get killed because he just twists his head in the jerry <laughs> curl juice. Next thing you know, Tommy has a deer out in the woods being hunted, but the deer has jerry curl juice, and he's doing this thing. Yeah. And the crowd can't, we, it's ridiculous, and we can't breathe. It was like wow. a collective laughing fit. I mean, people wow. are just, people are panting, they're falling out their <laughs> yeah, chairs, yeah. and they literally physically had to remove him from the stage wow. so that people could breathe again. It was yeah. one of the greatest, wow. just one of those moments where he just hit on something, and it was so ridiculous, wow. and he gave it so much life. And I was watching, and I mean, I'm laughing my ass up. But yeah. I'm also watching it like, wow, yeah. that's how good at this you can be, where you have a whole group, a group of people. group laughing fit. La yeah, a yeah. group laughing fit where they just can't. And, the, you know, when you get oh, into that, where and magic. now anything you say is funny. So yeah. now... Anything he did oh, yeah. with the curl, whether yeah. it was, you know, it was on the front of your car yeah. and you spray yeah. the car with yeah. Jericho juice yeah. and you're in a drive by and the bullets are bouncing off yeah. your car. And it, you know, it was just, it was totally insane, but he gave it such life and it just, you know, sometimes that happens. And, and I know you've had these sets, right? When you have that set where the crowd is laughing so hard and you walk off stage and people are like, what'd you say? And you're like, I don't even know. Yeah. Like, you, it's just. It's like a flow. Yeah, it's like an energy. Flow. You were in, just in the moment and connected. Those are the laughing fits I like. We all oh. experience them sometimes. And But I remember that one because I was a new comic and I was just watching. And I was like, wow. That's man. why I, I, I like that thing because laughing fits don't happen as much as you think in your life. Like when you look back, like. Those fits where it's just overwhelming and yeah. you can't breathe and it's sort of, it, they come very rare. Like think in a year, how, like you've laughed in a year, but how many like out of control laughing fits where your stomach hurts? Those are rare. And right. so- Right, and you can't, you yeah. can't intentionally create them. No. It no. happens in the moment for whatever reason, you know, things come together. It's, yeah. It's a- ridiculousness and it hits something in you and then and it, but i love that once it starts then anything is funny right anything just keeps it going and and what happens is a lot of time it escalates like you think oh, yeah. you can't laugh yeah. any harder and yeah. then someone does something and it goes and it just goes it's yeah. amazing and it goes even farther jerry curl juice loaded <laughs> with vitamin c <laughs> But before we go, where does that term come from, Jerry Curl? I've always wondered. That's what it was called. I, I don't know it? who came up is with it. Is it a it hairdo was, or a, yeah, a style? No, it was like this this chemical you put in your hair. Oh, so it is that juice. Made it, it was. It was a liquid. They called it activator, and it would make oh, your hair. Wow. It would make your hair like like it had a like wet look and a curl to it. Dude. And it was really popular, you know, in the eighties and nineties. I never did it. But uh, well, it was, obviously, no, I yeah. wasn't. But a lot of people did. Alonzo, and I. This you was can't. a thing. 
This you was can. a thing I always remembered about Jerry Curl and Jerry Curl. Jr. By the way, can Jerry Curl be one of the new X Men? I mean, just that <laughs> name sounds. It's got to be an X Men. I would hate going out with a girl and she had one because oh, it would get all juice? over your car seat. You know, you'd be like, oh, yeah. gee, look at this mess. You know, just your car seat. What about if something she started getting oral on? You'd be like you were getting it from oh, a yeah, blob of you, seaweed yeah, or now something. You're, nah, you're, those, well, yikes. That's a worth worthwhile trade. Yeah, it's already lubed up. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> we gotta end on the Jerry. Cur- <laughs> We're gonna slide on out of here on the Jerry on Curl on Jerry Curl Juice. Uh, folks, check out Alonzo. Go to all his social media. Check out his specials on YouTube. Yes, on YouTube. Stupid, don't get tired. Amazing. Yep. And you do a lot of stuff on NPR Radio too. I do. Wait, yeah. wait, don't tell me on NPR. Yeah. And I do uh, videos with the Young Turks. That's the pundit side. Yeah. That's that's. We're gonna talk some politics. You know, the funny thing about politics when people say to a comedian oh you shouldn't do politics it's like oh that means you don't agree with me that's right that's all it means if, and that's if, stupid <laughs> because i find if you don't agree with someone the, who cares listen to the opinion listen to the the funny you right know what or I mean? don't or yeah, don't you know right. it one of the funny things on social media is when you tune in to hate somebody yeah i don't have that kind of time yeah you know yeah. I, I hate this guy let me hear what he has to say no i'm good i've yeah, heard right, enough right, yeah. out of him yeah i've heard enough yeah. with don't need to you know hear- it, Gone. I'm not going to suddenly love Tucker Carlson tomorrow. Yeah, right, it's right. Like, yeah, I, I got you. You got, got you, you. You know where it's coming from. You got yours. I'll keep mine. Get on that. <laughs> get on that Jerry Curl surfboard and get out of That's Dodge. Right. We're out of Dodge. Thanks for being here. Until next time, chicken chow mein, ladies and gentlemen. And I got a Ducati. I did oh, a show, dude. and I now have a Ducati. It's I a dare you thing. to a ride that home, or b get on some lingerie and lay out on it later. 0 for 2 on that, just so you know. We're out of here. Harland Highway, Alonzo Bowden, lingerie model, motorcycle driver, and will never do Jerry Curl. (laughs) Never. (laughs) Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Awesome.